Okay, so here's a very typical example of how you might encounter co-ratios and um, I'll show you now step by step how would you do this. First of all, they ask us to simplify this expression. If you look at this expression, we have inside our ratios, we have angles that are not positive, well some of them aren't positive and definitely not acute. So what we're going to first try and do before we do anything involving co-ratios, our first step would be make angles positive and acute. Positive and acute. So how will we go about that? Well to do that we'll need our cost diagram. So there cost diagram and we know this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees and 360 degrees would be there. We see we also have negative angles so let's number in the negative direction as well. Negative 90, negative 180, negative 270 and negative 360. Okay and, and that's it. So first we ask ourselves in which quadrant does the angle 133, negative 133. So we measure from the x-axis in the anti-clockwise, uh, sorry, in the clockwise direction. 100, negative 133 is larger than negative 180, yet um, smaller than negative 90. So it would be somewhere here. Okay. If we want to ask what is the angle it makes with the x-axis, we're asking how much must we still subtract to get to 80, 180 I mean, negative 180. Now if we subtract 7 more we get to 150 and to get from negative 150 to negative 180 we must subtract another 30. So in total we must subtract uh, 37, no? Look at me, okay. If we subtract 7 more we get to negative 140, I'm sorry. Okay, and to get from one negative 140 to 40, we must subtract another 40. So in total, we must subtract 47. So this can also be expressed as cos of 180 degrees minus 47. Now, this is what I mean. Now, once again, this is something I see students do very, very often. They don't say 180 degrees minus 47 degrees. They say 180 minus 130. Oh, sorry, that must be negative 180 minus 133. No, we're not trying to subtract that angle. We're trying to uh, create that angle with some other angle. And that's what I got. why I got there. Let's see now. What about 317 degrees? That's a positive angle. So we measure in the anti-clockwise direction to 270 and a little bit more, but less than 360. So we're somewhere in here. And again, the question is, what is the angle that I make with the x-axis? What angle am I making here? Well, to get from 317 to 360, I add 3 to get to 320, and I add another 40 to get to 360. So in total, I added 43. 43, that's the angle. So in other words, 317 can also just be expressed as 360 minus 43. And this is for sine. Now we can use our reduction formula just to simplify this somewhat. So we have cos of negative 180 minus. That we see is the third quadrant where tan is positive so cos must be negative. So it's negative cos of 47 degrees divided by and here 360 minus that is sine um, and the 360 minus is fourth quadrant and that cos is positive in that quadrant sine is not so sine must be negative sine of 43 now this is how you will notice that you are supposed to be using co-ratios. The angles inside these will be complementary angles. Okay, in other words, if we add them we get 90 complementary angles. So 47 plus 43 is equal to 90. So we can go write one of them as the co-ratio of the other one. So if let's take cos. Cos 47 is sine 
well, let's rather write it like this. Cos of 47 is the same as saying cos of 90 minus 43 divided by, and we leave the other one, we don't want to change that one as well, okay, of 43. Now here you notice I just showed you here that the negatives cancel, so they have no influence anymore, okay, but here we notice that cos of 90 minus, 90 minus is an angle made with the y-axis, we want angles with the x-axis, and to do that we use the co-ratio for cos is sine, so we get sine, 90 minus can therefore be cancelled, sine of 43 degrees, over sine of 43 degrees, what's that going to yield? It's going to give us 1.